To be able to draw a frequency polygon when represented with a table such as this, there are five steps. The first is draw a horizontal axis with a suitable scale that fits the midpoint. You'll notice in our table here, we don't currently have the midpoints, so we're gonna to have to find those before that step. Sometimes you might be given them. The midpoints are relatively straightforward to find. It's just the middle value in each class. So for example, this first class, you've got zero and 30 as the lower and upper bounds respectively, and you need to find the value that's in the middle of those or halfway in between them. So you might be able to do that off the top of your head and say that it's 15. However, if you need to do a calculation for it, you could take an average of the two. So zero plus 30 divided by two, the sum of the terms divided by the number of terms, and this will give you, well, zero plus 30 is 30 divided by two, so you get 15 again. So for more complex numbers, you might have to use this calculation, or if you can do it off the top of your head, that's also fine as well. So calculating the midpoints for all of these results in this table. So you can see the midpoint for the first class was 15, as mentioned, the next one's 45, the next one's 75, the next one's 105, and the next one's 135. From there, we can do the first few steps. So we can draw a horizontal axis with a suitable scale that fits the midpoints of the class, because now we know all of the midpoints, so we know that it needs to accommodate midpoints from 15 all the way up to 135. We also know that the vertical axis needs to accommodate the frequencies, so from two up to 10. We need a suitable title and suitable axis labels. Well, the title will just be this, download times, so doing that, we can draw an axis now. You can see the information has been relayed onto here. Our vertical axis, the y-axis, I suppose, goes up to 10 to accommodate our highest frequency and start at zero to make sure that we can fit our lowest frequency of two in. And then our horizontal axis accommodates up to 150 because our maximum is only 135. So you, you can do a little bit more. You can make sure it fits, but don't do too much because you're just wasting space. From there, we can plot some points. So you're gonna plot the midpoints against the frequencies. What that means is the midpoints are gonna be the X values and the frequency is gonna be the Y values. From there, you can plot that and do step five, which is connect each point to the previous one. And that results in this shape. So you can see, for example, this point is plotted at 15, two, because the midpoint was 15 for that class, like we calculated, and the frequency was two. For example, this point was 75 10 because the midpoint was 75 and the frequency is 10 and so on you'll notice here as well i have not connected the first point to the last like this you shouldn't do that the frequency polygon should not be closed you may occasionally get problems where it says here's a frequency polygon identify some issues if it's closed like that that is an issue it should not be closed several conclusions can be drawn from a frequency polygon First of which, the modal class can be determined. This is the class with the highest frequency, evident from the highest point on the graph. The diagram will also show an estimate of the range. In practice, if we use the example from the previous part, so the modal class is the one with the highest frequency, the highest point. So on this one, you can clearly see that that's this point here. So that's the midpoint of the class that goes between 60 and 90. So our modal class for this one would be if download times is t, it's gonna be 60. So t is greater than 60 or less than or equal to 90. An estimate of the range, now it is purely an estimate because remember, we're talking about classes here and we don't know where values within the classes lie. They could be at the top of the class, they could be in the middle of the class, they could be at the start of the class, we don't know. So an estimate we could take is this point here, because of course this is our lowest class, and this is our biggest class. So this lies at an X value or a, a midpoint of 15, and this one lies at 135. So the range for this will be 135 take away 15. So 120. If you found this video useful, why not try the topic test on our learning platform? Here, you can answer a series of questions and get instant feedback on how you've done in a written solution format with an explanation exactly how you should have solved the problem.